would like to join um, in welcoming Mike O'Brien to talk to us, our first presenter this morning uh, for Meet the Authors. Mike is from Ardmore, County Waterford in Ireland, with a background as a kinesiologist and a psychotherapist. And he tells us at the heart of what he does is compassionately hold space while trying to remain fully present in the moment to listen and hear, not just with ears, but what lies beyond and behind a person's words. The three main aspects of his work include non-judgmental awareness, creative communication and multi-sensory listening skills. It can be summed up with talk the talk and walk the walk, whether it is mind, body or soul. Um, his ultimate aim is to empower people to see what they are doing and then to make real choices to mind their mind, nurture their bodies and feed their souls. And Mike's presentation today is on Anam Dreyek's Magical Celtic Soul. Please join me in welcoming Mike. And Mike has prepared a lovely video for us, which I am now going to play. Well, here we're going to talk about the start of Magical Celtic Soul, the Anam Dreyek, which is the Irish for Celtic Soul. Everything in life is interconnected. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency and vibration. For our purposes, we're going to look at in spirit and soul as an idea, a concept that body, mind, soul and spirit is you. Today's science fiction is tomorrow's science fact that has been born out in so many years of this world. The Anam Drake cards are not about controlling people, going on the dark side, predicting the future or telling people what to do. But rather more about promoting and choosing the very heartbeat of self-responsibility in taking ownership of your life. Getting started, there are six steps to success. One is the clearing protocols and setting a goal. These are the protocols we use in kinesiology. Two, a person chooses cards. Give them time to sit with them and to feel their way and get comfortable. Three, ask a person's own insights. It's about them. It's about their insights. It's about their vision. It's about their journey. Four, offer an opinion or information relative to the goal that is set on step one. 5. Explore all the learned insights that come from the cards, from setting the goal and everything else. 6. Ask if any more needs to be done. Then you are done. You have completed the 6 steps to success. In the cards, card 1 is where you've come from, the lessons you have learned and where you need to go. Card 2, where you are currently at, obstacles and challenges facing you. Card 3 is lessons or things you need to learn for to achieve your goal going forward. My goal in doing this presentation is to select the best possible three cards so people might gain an insight and understand the process. Card 1. The one I picked was Nature Stand. That's the name of the card. There are symbols, suits, elements, the god goddesses, Celtic ones, meaning, aspects, positive, negative and learnings. It's a red poppy with stone wall, boundaries and a blue sky. It's a journey card. It's from the earth element. The god goddess attached to it is Dagda, a highly skilled god of abundance, wise beyond me measure, god of life, death, magic and druidry. Its meaning is uniqueness, flowering in the midst of suffering, awakenings, rebirth and hope. Its positive aspects are sacredness of individuality, inner beauty, uniqueness and flowering. Negative aspects are fear of being different, not fitting in, not appreciating or embracing one's own inner beauty can be indecisive or overly sensitive. 
The learnings are who are you inside is important for it reflects your soul to the outside world. Not all will see nor appreciate it. Second card, Miss of Illusion number 10. The symbols of this is Miss Cliffs, Passageway and Heather. It's another journey card and its element is water. The God Goddess is Morrigan, a battle, death and chaos queen, protector, shapeshifter, prophetic, insights fear and is a fearless warrior. Its meaning is to be optimistic and cheerful, preoccupation with the future or the past, both are illusions. A better vision of yourself lies within your reach. Positive aspects, seeing the way forward, ability not to go blindly, lose oneself, insight and patience, negative ones, short-sighted, not being able to see the possible hidden dangers, tendency to get lost in comfort and accept mediocrity. Your present situation is not your final destination. Pause, refocus. Now is not a time for a rush of blood to the head. Do not let the mists of illusion cloud your judgment or dampen your spirits. Remember, all is not what it seems to be. Third card. Threshold Guardian. Symbols in the archway portal, broken stony path, cloaked person, facing forward, infinity symbol. It's the inspirational suit and it's the earth element. The Goban Seer is the god that is associated with highly skilled, master architect, creating things of beauty, quick-witted, and doesn't like meanness. Meaning is facing a new world, entering uncharted territory, a gateway, soul higher or self-calling, calmness facing the unknown. It's a spirit companion, released from the past, on the verge of cause of enlightenment. Free your mind, free your soul. You are garden of your own spirit, soul, reality. Shadow side is self-doubt, negativity, blocks your path, stuck in the past and afraid to move on. The learnings are seek out your brightest future, spend time on realizing your potential. Have an air of confidence and self-belief as you boldly move towards new horizons. Understanding and healing from trauma. Neuroscience research shows that the only way we can change the way we feel is by becoming aware of our inner experience and learning to befriend what is going on inside ourselves. How we perceive and how our bodies process that perception play a big role in creating both our physical and emotional realities. Sometimes our thoughts and emotions take on a life of their own and things can go pear shaped. While we cannot change our heightened reactivity, we can learn and choose our responses. Breathe and patiently sit out the moment the lights to come back on again. Don't poke the bear. Do not awaken the guard dogs. Let him sleep. Let sleeping dogs lie or pay the price. Know when you are being triggered. After a while we learn to seem for what they are. Overthinking. Overfeeling. Overstressed overwhelmed 
overpowering. These are all signs of when it's been triggered. If a person feels safe and doesn't perceive any immediate danger, then they have a whole lot more of conscious awareness and brain power to help them deal with their issues. The world is full of magical things, patiently waiting for our senses to grow sharper. Which leads us to the cards. If you would like to find out more about the Anime Drill Cards Magical Soul Cards or the two day accredited course, you can book your place or reserve a place by contacting Michael O'Brien or Jer Casey on the Facebook page Anime Drill Magical Soul. Life can be superficial and meaningless without the magical moments when our souls come out to play and dance with the universe. Anam Driot, Magical Soul, teaching you to be beautifully authentic so you can be a light to others when they have lost their own. So, just want to thank Mike so much for preparing that beautiful, really beautiful video for us. So, thank you, Mike. And I'm going to open it up now for questions and <coughs> answers with you, Mike. Yeah, no problem. Has anybody got any questions, comments or musings? I just wanted to say that that was really lovely, Mike. It really resonated with me. The cards that you picked, I actually felt emotional. So thank you. Thank you. I have a question, Mike. It was talking about poking the bear and triggers mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it can identify with the triggers, really. Uh, so how would the cards help me if I know I'm being triggered in a particular moment or how can I use the cards that way? Yeah, you see, a lot of the times when we talk about talk therapy or we get into stuff, we're automatically triggered. The beauty of what the cards do is a lot of what Wayne does in ESR and what Sylvia does in her work. Oh, you don't yeah. poke the bear and you don't trigger the bears. You don't set off the bombs, the unexploded stuff that's hidden underneath it. Because if you look at something, if you listen to kids when they speak, they always talk in third party. You know, they don't talk about themselves. It's outside themselves. And sometimes that's where when people are in a space where they're not totally immersed in their own trauma, hurt, pain, anguish, they talk in third party and the cards are third party. So they're talking about an inanimate object describing something about themselves. So it doesn't get triggered into the same emotional heightened intensity. So they can talk about it, discuss it, and then bring it back to their present situation in a more rational, logical, composed manner. It's their own gentle, it's their own compassion. We've got so used to being analytical and critical and judgmental and putting ourselves down that it, we do it by the very thoughts and words that we use. So in imagery, and that's why I did it through imagery, this presentation, the imagery spoke or didn't speak to people in their own language, within their own perception of where they're at and who they are. It's not just mine. And that's where the magic happens. It works at where people are at rather than where I would like them to be or where I think they should be. Yeah, that's a lovely way to think about it as well. It's the magic. Yeah, it is. The magic, yeah. Thank you. Anybody else got any questions for Mike? Irene? Mike, just in the, the process of developing the course, were the cards an existing resource for you or were they created for the course? I started years ago. I went to my body thing in Cork. And there was a person speaking about Celtic spirituality back in the UK. So I was going, hey, you're over in Ireland. So we have our own thing. The thing about the cards, to me, I'm a visual person, obviously. When you say, I see you, I see what you mean. I know what you mean. If you listen to language, language will tell you very often where a person is at. So I started designing the cards because I'm in connection with the lands and with the arts, naturally with Ireland and identity. But the cards are about more about what we are beyond the sum of our parts. So I designed the cards first and then I started training with Jer 
in the process. And then I came across Wayne's work. And then I, I started using the cards in ways they were kind of shamanic, basic earth, fire, wind, water stuff. But I didn't realize it at the time. But if a picture paints a thousand words, basically, images say an awful lot more. Irrespective of what our cultures are, what our backgrounds are, what our belief systems, imagery says so much more than just words. So the cards came first. Jer helped me um, in the process of designing the course. She helped me with the cards as well. So did Orla. So they kind of happened in a symmetry way, synchronicity. They didn't happen in isolation of the other. Because I trained with Jer and I was designing the cards at the same time. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we've time now for one more question. Anybody else uh, got something that they'd... Oh, well, we'll take two more. So first of all, Marion and then Wayne. Yeah, well, just um, this morning, uh, Mike, I, I drew the, the card uh, Dragonfly, which was very appropriate for where I'm at right now. So thank you so much for that, because it really uh, has helped me with an issue that I'm working with. So thank you for that. And I loved your video. It was great. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you yeah, likewise, I, I love the video. I appreciate people that have uh, artistic skills in that, in that area. But I have a question because you gave three different cards. One, as I understand, was where you're at. We, well, I, I can't remember what the three aspects were, but you drew them with regard to this presentation. What I heard was a list of characteristics, but I didn't see the interpretation. What it is you drew out the cards that pertain to this presentation. Are you willing to share that or would you rather not? Brilliant question, Wayne. And it's what I come to love and appreciate about yourself, your mind. Behind that is I drew the cards, I gave what the presentation, what they kind of mean, roughly my interpretation. But in working with people and working with it, you would ask them how it is relative to their perception, their experience. So it's about engagement. It's about active participation. It's about involvement. It's to see where they're coming from, not where I want to bring them to. That's wonderful. Thank you, uh, Wayne. Thanks for taking the questions and answers and people might even have more. If you have comments for Mike, you can put them in the chat. And Mike, we'll invite you to put your, your contact information in the chat as well so people can pick that up. And where can where or when can pe people take the course or is it a case of uh, contacting you? Well, contact me. There's one in the end of January and one in the end of February. The online course would be something we'll put together in the process early next year. Is it's January and February in person? Uh, yes. Yeah, They're in it's... person. Yeah. yeah. So thanks very much to Mike for giving us all that wonderful insight into the power and the magic of the cards. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.